how to create some um, particle effects inside Unreal 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a sprite uh, for this particle effect. Uh, I'm going to make a new folder for that. Okay, I'm going to call this particles. And in here, I'm just going to have another folder just for my sprites for these particles. I'm going to right click import where you can drag and drop. And I'm just going to get this blood drop. Uh, I'll just show you this blood drop image to start off with. So it's very small. Um, and basically, all it has is an alpha channel around. Uh, the sides of it just so that it isn't end up like it's going to produce a black square or anything like that So this is all transparent with an alpha map So we'll bring that in I'm going to right click it spread actions uh, and apply paper 2d texture settings And I'm going to have to make a material out of this because particles don't accept just sprites or textures and anything like that They have to accept materials So I'm going to right click I'm going to create a material and I'm just going to call this blood map. You'll see it'll have a green underline to it. Double click that and it'll open up the material editor. And what it's going to produce for us is basically a standard material which doesn't have any color, um, but it doesn't have the exact attributes that we need either. Um, so over here on the left hand side is our preview for our material. So it's just going to show us kind of what our material is going to look like in game. If I click uh, on an empty area or on this main block here, um, you'll see the details for this material, okay? Over here is our palette where we can drag and drop in nodes, kind of like our blueprints. And up at the top, we've kind of got like live nodes, live update. We can save, search, clean up, that type of thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this material type, okay? So we want it translucent because we're going to be working with, you know, alpha maps. And we don't want it lit, okay? Because we're not, we don't have any lights in our scene anymore or at this point. So we just want to have a, a mix of color and not our base color. So we're going to change this to unlit. And you'll see base color becomes blanked out. And then what we want to do is find our texture for blood drop and drag that into this main material area here. I could just plug this in to emissive color. I'll just change this to a cube so we can see it better. And this is, just to go over this again, this here top one is basically my RGB uh, channels combined. And then this here is my red channel, green channel, and blue channel. And then this bottom one is my alpha channel. So if I plug this into emissive color, and then my alpha into opacity, we'll now see what our actual particle effect is going to look like. Now the problem with this is it's not just set up for a particle just yet. Uh, because we might want to change the color in the particle editor, or we want to change the transparency, uh, we're going to have to add in what's known as a particle color node. So if I right click and type in particle color, you'll see it'll pop up. And basically what we want to do is we want to have the values that will be coming from our particle editor uh, in here and multiply them against uh, what we have in here. So what I want to do is right click, type in multiply. Spelled it wrong. And I can have a shortcut for that by holding down N and M and clicking in there. What we want to do is we want to multiply our color by the particle color and our alpha by the particle color alpha and then plug these into the opacity and the emissive. You won't notice any change uh, but it just means that when we're using certain attributes in our particle editor that they will actually work now um, such as alpha over life or color over life we'll be able to change them in the particle editor. Um, if we didn't have this node attached in this way, it wouldn't work. So that's the material setup for now. It's just a simple material. And then we're going to right click and actually I'm going to go back into my particles here and I'm going to right click and 
keep it in here. Uh, we're going to create a particle system. Uh, we'll just call this blood underscore part for particle. So this is the particle editor. It used to be called Cascade in UDK. I don't think they have a name for it in Unreal 4. But basically a particle um, system um, comp uh, is comprised of multiple particle emitters. Now we're just going to have one for our blood. But you could have a one particle emitter here and then right click and add a new particle emitter. Um, you know that changes its velocity in some way. So I can change this in X. So you can see that particle is spitting particles over that way. So I'll just delete that one. But for now, we're just going to work with one. Um, we do have standard um, nodes uh, attached to this, such as like there's a required one, a spawn one, how long it's going to last through the lifetime, the initial size of the particle, the initial velocity, and the color over life. This is the one that's going to work with our material. If we go to required, you'll see that it takes in a material. So if we click on our drop down here, we've got blood mat. So that's what we're going to use. Might take a while to calculate, but then it'll start pitting out our blood. So now we've got a simple uh, particle working. What we want to do though is have this in bursts. So when we activate this, it might just throw out, um, you know, maybe five or six blood droplets and then kill off the particle emitter after that. So in required, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the emitter loops only once, so it only happens once. You can restart the sim here or restart the level there as well, okay, just to restart your particle effect. And then if we go to spawn, if we go to rate, I'm going to change that to zero. And what I want to do is I want to have a burst instead, so down below that is burst, it's got no elements to it yet, but what I'm going to do is hit plus and I'll put our count at like 8. So it's going to put out 8 particles in a burst. Okay, uh, lifetime um, is currently set to 1 second. And I think that's okay for now. And then initial size, we probably want to change that. So if we go to initial size, we can change that to 6. Six, six. So it means it's like six, six, six on the x, y, z as max, and then four, four, four as a min. So it'll work between these numbers, okay? So it just means that our blood droplets could be bigger or smaller, so they're not always going to be the same size. Initial velocity is the next one, and we're going to change this to eighty in the x, ten in the Y and 227 in the Z and then as a min we're going to have it minus 79 minus 10 and 65 so we kind of have it like splashing up in there color for life we're just going to leave for a second we're going to add in a new node which we're going to right click and under acceleration we're going to have acceleration over life so this is how it's going to accelerate over its lifetime and if we go down these tabs to constant curve you'll see that we don't have any points we're going to add in two points so click one element and then click a plus for another element and this here is the speed of its acceleration at zero seconds and then this other element is also at zero seconds so we we'll probably want to change them to start off with so this in value here uh, for the second element which is called element one is going to be 0.15 and the values for that is going to be in the out file in the z minus 729 So you can see now the water droplets are having this initial velocity of um, like 80 and 
between 227 and 65 <clears throat> so it's kind of making it go up initially but then the acceleration over a life um, after 0.15 is dragging it down by minus 729 again you can change these values if you want um, but I think I'll leave them in uh, the lifetime I might turn down to a maximum of like 0.6 something like that Um, but you can tweak that and see how it works in your game and then come back and uh, change those values. Um, other thing that we're going to add in is maybe size by life. So if I go to size and then size by life. This is where we can add in um, how it's going to be sized over its lifetime. So it's already added in two elements for us. Uh, what we want to do is maybe for like 0.2 um, we'll change the value so instead of um, 1 it might be 2 so it's gotten bigger so it starts off relatively small um, maybe I'll put that to 0.3 so it starts off small but then it grows and then we'll go back to our color over life and what we want to concentrate on is the alpha one. We might not have to actually change much in this. Again, it's got two values. Zero, which starts at zero seconds. And then one that starts at one second. Now our lifetime is uh, up at max 0.6. So what we want to do is maybe put that in val at like 0.4. And you can see now that it's disappearing a lot quicker. Probably too much, so I'll probably leave that at one. Um, again, the color over life, um, if we go to distribution, we'll have two elements. This is kind of where we can change the color over our lifetime. So, you know, it's you know white, so it's multiplying everything by one at the minute, and this is by one. But if I went in here, I could change it to like blue maybe. You can see as it disappears, it's getting into a slight shade of blue. You can see if I turn the time down, it's happening quicker for that. So that's something that you can add in as well if you wish to do that. Um, so let's go over these nodes again. So this is required. This is where you add in your material and you can set how many times it's going to loop, the mid or duration, uh, the low one and stuff like that. Um, spawn is where you can set your spawn count at the top. I've had to change that to zero because we're working with a burst and our burst is a burst of eight. Okay. Uh, lifetime, this is how long uh, each particle can last. So it's a range of like between 0.4 and 0.6. I could even leave that to one. Initial size, this is where we're determining the actual initial size of the particle, so I've multiplied it by a maximum of 6 and a minimum of 4, so it's going to work between those numbers, so there is a bit of randomness to it. Initial velocity is working out how quick and what direction it's going to be moving in initially, so I've got that working on the x, so between 80 and 79, I suppose that could be minus 80. Um, so it's working between a value of like 80 and minus 80, a value of 10 on the y and minus 10 on the min y, and then z is 227 and 65. So it's moving more up uh, than anything else. Color over life is working with what color changes you have over its lifetime, and you can also work with alpha on that. And again, you have to have your material set up properly for that. And then acceleration is kind of what direction it's going to move in at and at what speed over its lifetime. So at zero seconds, it's not changing uh, direction or speed. But at 0.15, I'm making it move down. So that initial velocity is making it come up, but then the acceleration over life is dragging it back down. And then size over life is, again, just changing the size over its lifetime. So it starts off at 1, and then at 0.3, it's going to be moved up to 2. I could probably make that a bit bigger. So that's our particle done. Uh, we might need to change a few things. Um, <clears throat> to kind of get that into the game, though, we're going to have to make that into a blueprint. So what I'm going to do is right-click 
blueprint class, I'm going to make it an actor and I'll call it blood underscore part underscore bp. Double click that and it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, all we're going to do is drag our particle in here. So we've got our blood and then event graph, what we're going to say event begin play. We're going to delay for a second. So delay for a second and then destroy actor. So it's just going to destroy the actor. So it's just going to make sure it's not um, eating up any resources in our game. So after a second, you know, it's just going to be destroyed. Compile and save. Then what we want to do is with our enemies, remember we've got our health and death. What we want to do in that is after the camera check, so we're going to disconnect and destroy actor just by holding down alt and clicking on the arrow. So after this camera shake, we are going to spawn, type in spawn, and spawn actor from class. And then this is where we're going to get our blood particle BP. It does need a transformation, so what I'll do is I'll get the component and I'll type in transform. So get world transform and plug that into the location. So that is where it's going to be spawning from. Compile and save that. So every time it gets hit now, it should spawn some blood. So that's not working. Oh, that's... I forgot this is if you're jumping on its head, not shooting it. So if I jump on its head, it should spawn some blood. There we go. Um, if I get the health deplete function for this, what I'll do is I'll paste that spawn actor blood in there as well. So every time it loses some health, it's going to spawn some blood as well. So that's how you set up an initial particle uh, like a, and spawn it in a level as well. Um, so what you could think about doing is having particles so when you land it spawns like a dust particle. Um, I'll show you as well how to make an explosion from, from a sprite sheet. Um, you could have other, other particles such as sparks so when your weapon uh, hits a player or an enemy or a wall like sparks will fly off as well really good way of like giving visual feedback on what's happening in your game for the player